Hi everybody, this is Chief Francis, Big Boy Screamador, and today's another Motivational Monday. And we're gonna change things up a little bit. So one of the things that a good friend of mine uh, suggested is that I start sharing with you guys my struggles and my wins when it comes to being a big person, being Big Boy Screamador, right? Um, but in order for me to do that, um, I, I think you get need to know a little bit about me and my, my journey as far as my health and me being a big person is concerned. So let's start at the very beginning. Um, when I was born, um, my planet was about to explode and my parents uh, wanted to put me on a spaceship. No, just kidding. Um, no, so when I was born, I was born two months early. I was a premature baby. I was, uh, uh, I was the fourth of, of, of children that, that uh, my mom had, but she lost the first three. And um, so they really thought when I was when I was being born early that I was that I was going to be uh, I wasn't going to make it. Um, I remember my mother telling me that when I was born, I was very I looked like an old an old man. She actually told she actually said this to me that I was the ugliest baby. I'm like, that's a great thing to hear from your own mother. Right. So that that doesn't mean that I need therapy or anything like that. But um, yeah, so I was born premature. And when I, they really thought that I wasn't going to make it the next two weeks. Um, well, after two weeks, not only did I make it, since I'm here, <laughs> um, I also, um, I also uh, started to thrive. And in, a, in two months, they brought me back to the hospital for my, for my follow-up, I guess. And I was big fat kid at that point right um and they're like they couldn't even uh, they couldn't even like fathom that i was the same kid that, that that was born two months previous and how much i i gained weight and uh but it does not mean i did not have many health issues one of the main health issues i had was i had rheumatic fever i would catch a i would also catch a i would get easily sick my immune system was not very strong uh, my heart wasn't very strong because of of my condition um, so as a result of that, I would be in the hospital a lot. I'd be in the hospital for uh, a few weeks, out for a few days, and I'll be back in the hospital again a few weeks uh, for a few more weeks again. Uh, this was pretty much the first six years of my life. Um, I really, you know, I did not really uh, um, understand why I was in and out of the hospital. I was just a happy kid, but all I knew was that I wasn't you know, uh, that I was something, I was something wrong, right? Okay. Um, now, on the times when I'm not in the hospital, um, I would always be very well protected in a sense where I'm not allowed to really go out um, and just hang out outside or something like that. I was, I was basically told to stay indoors, which, which possibly par uh, contributed to the fact that I'm not a very active person because I was pretty much told to stay inside. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I had a happy childhood. Uh, my parents were awesome. My family's awesome. Um, my sister, my my cousins, uh, they they all re and my aunts and uncles. They all really took really good care of me. But they were always scared. They were always scared that I'm going to get sick again. And you know, I don't really necessarily blame them, but they definitely um, you know treated me with kid gloves since I was a kid. Um, but as as time <clears throat> as time grew. The fear of me being sick was still there, and they um, they were as as I got older, they were relaxed a little bit, but they were still very scared. Um, I remember that my entire life was watching movies, and this is why I love movies so much, is because. That, that just reminds me of my childhood. So I, you know, my, you know, back then we would rent videos and just pop it into VHS, or, uh, uh, that in our house was Betamax, uh, pop it into Betamax player and just watch movies. Um, I had two cousins that was, that was close to my age, Queen uh, Nong and Ate Um They, they were my constant companions. They were, they were, they were like my, you know, they were, we were like so close that we were probably siblings, right? But again, they were all still very worried about my health and me getting sick again. So uh, even going to school, going to elementary school, um, it was it was a very challenging time because I was always very sickly and I was not allowed to uh, to do very extraneous things. Um, it was only when I was in seventh, gr uh, second grade, excuse me, 
uh, we had a kickball team and I was told that I had to play the home plate. Like basically it's kickball with like baseball, right? So, but without a bat, it's just a soccer ball. And you know, that was fine. And you know, I, I did what I did, but I wasn't, again, I wasn't very physical and I wasn't very active, but I never thought that I was, there, were, there was really something around me. I just thought I was just a, a normal kid who just gets sick, gets sick a lot, right? Um, but that's what it was. And then it wasn't until we moved to America and, and I was in seventh grade, junior high. That's when I realized that I really wasn't a very active, wasn't very physically active person. Um, you know, I just, I played with the other kids. I, I rode my bike when I could, um, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I just, I just did what other kids do. Now, thankfully around, when I was around seven, I stopped going in and out of the hospital. Uh, I was, I was um, getting this shot every month to kind of boost my immune system. So that was, um, that's what I had to, uh, that's, that's what I just had to do was just get this shot every month. And so I, I never had to go back to the hospital. Not at least not for that anyway. And when, and then when I got to junior high and in junior high, our junior high school made us, um, run a mile every Friday and every Friday, um, I dreaded that because I, I could not run a mile. I just couldn't. Uh, there's many people, uh, teachers even have mentioned to me that I can walk a mile. They can walk a mile with under 12 minutes. The best mile time I had was 15 minutes and 54 seconds. I remember that specifically because I really worked hard for that 15 minutes and 54 seconds. But, you know, it was the best that I could do. And that's when I knew that, that, that yeah, I wasn't a physical person. And in the, in, the, in the PE class that I was in, we had the two fastest kids in the school. They're, and they're probably the fastest kids in the state, to be quite honest with you, because they both ran the mile in under five minutes. Like one kid ran, ran it at four minutes and 58 seconds, and the other kid ran it at four minutes, 54 seconds. I, I'm like, that is insanely fast. They're literally three times faster than I am, right? So, um, but yeah, so that, that's when I kind of knew that I wasn't, um, I wasn't a physical person. I wasn't a jock. And keep in mind, junior high, that's when we started really discovering, you know, our, ourselves. We're starting to, to see things differently. We're starting to see girls. We're starting to see um, that our bodies have, are, are changing in many, in many ways. Um, and um, you start, you know, questioning whether or not you are, are popular or not, right? So it, so it was very hard. It was very hard to realize that I wasn't a jock and I, I wasn't very physical. But uh, the best thing about that was I was very, uh, I was very, um, I, I have a more of an artist uh, mind. I was a performer. I was, a, I, I joined a theater crew, a troupe called the Brenner Park Children's Musical Theater, which is now called Brenner Park Youth Theater. And I did a lot of musicals. Now, uh, might not mean a lot to a lot of people. It might be weird for some people, but to me, it was where I found where I belonged. It is where I found my tribe and where I found the people like me. And and the people at that at that theater troupe are still my family to this day. Um, but that's how I I cope with things. Like if I wasn't good at one thing, I found I found another thing that I could be great at something else. I wasn't a great I wasn't a great athlete, but I was a great performer. And that's the biggest thing about and if we're gonna talk about my journey as far as my weight and 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 getting into what I uh, you know how I'd win, how did I lose, there's gonna be a lot of stories where I lost and there's gonna be a lot of stories that I win, but mostly is because I was okay with not being good at something as long as I can find what I'm great at. Right? I might not be a great athlete, like I said, but I was a great performer. I would get solos. I would get leads all the time. And, 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 perform, and, and performance after performance, I would get great reviews, right? And so I, I thoroughly, I'm like, okay, I might not be that guy, but I'm definitely this guy. And that's the thing that I guess I want people to understand that, that it's okay for us not to be good at something as long as we find the things that we're good at and be great at it, right? And I know not everybody is good at any at everything, right? But I know you can be great at something. And that's what I want to, to encourage you people, everybody here, not you people, excuse me. 
that's what I want to encourage everybody who's watching this channel now, is that to understand that you don't have to be great at everything. You just have to be great at one thing and, and, and excel in that. And that's where, even though I'm not an athlete, I think I'm a pretty good Filipino martial artist. And that's part of the story and that's part of the journey. And as I embark in this journey, and I hope you come along with me, I hope that you, you yourself seek out the things that you're great at and go after it. My name is Chief Francis, Big Boy Screamador. I hope you guys find the things that you're great at. Peace out, God bless, and keep swinging them sticks.